Notice today's gospel reading is uh, pretty much identical to the one we had on Sunday, our Lord telling his disciples, basically all of us, to love one another as he has loved us. And I pointed out that, you know, that's a really difficult task to accomplish. And we even find it difficult to just love our neighbor as ourselves, never mind to love as Christ has loved us, giving his whole life. But I went on to give examples of how we see this even in our common day-to-day -day lives, how parents give of themselves for their children, how spouses are called to lay down their lives for each other, and of course, priests and religious who dedicate their lives to the service of God and God's people. I wanted to draw your attention to today's Saint, Saint Bernardine of Siena. And he was born in 1380, he died in 1444, and when he was just 20 years old, so I guess that was around the year 1400, when he was 20 years old, there was a terrible plague that was underway, and many people were in the, in the hospital, but there was very few people to take care of them. So as a 20-year-old, he sacrificed himself to care for these sick people, who were afflicted by the plague. And the plague was so severe that just in the hospital where he was helping, every day roughly 20 people would die from the plague. So he was willing to sacrifice himself, he was willing to risk his life to, to do this. And you know, we, we just kind of experienced a pandemic here of sorts, not nearly as severe or devastating as the plague that St. Bernardine of Siena dealt with, but how very afraid people are today. And so imagine yourself, or imagine a young man, 20 years old, willing to risk his life for complete strangers, to be at their service, to assist them when they are dying, to take care of them while they are in the hospitals at that time. Two years after that, he joined the Franciscans and became very influential. So he joined the, the strict observance of the Franciscans, which at that time wasn't doing so well, but because of his influence, the, um, the uh, more and more people were joining that particular group of, of the Franciscans. And he became known as a very great preacher. And he would travel all around Italy preaching. So not just in his diocese, but he had permission to travel all around Italy. And a number of times he was offered the bishopric to be made a bishop. But each time he refused and he said, well, all of Italy is pretty much my diocese already. And sometimes he would preach for three hours long. But people loved to listen to him. He was a very great speaker. He spoke very simply, very plainly. But he was also entertaining. Sometimes he, he would uh, amuse people in various ways. But he, he especially spoke on the importance of trying to grow in virtue and trying to root out vice in one's life. And so he would address the particular vices that people were prone to at that time, such as gambling and swearing and um, uh, you know, usury and things like that. So he, he was calling people back to the ways of God. There were political factions at that time. There were factions even within the church, but he focused on virtue and vice. That was his main and primary focus. And it needs to be our main primary focus also. So the most important thing in our lives is our relationship with God. It's our vices, our inclinations to sin, that prevents us from a greater union with Christ. And it's our lack of virtue that prevents us from being able to be at the service of our neighbor. So we are not all called to be like St. Bernardine of Siena, but we are all called to practice self-giving, to practice self-sacrifice for the sake of others, those that we love, those that are closest to us, our family members, but also to everyone including complete strangers. And we all know that it is challenging, but you know, someone like St. Bernardine of Siena is a great inspiration for all of us. He also, you know, he's especially noted for his reverence 
and, and uh, veneration of the holy name of our Lord Jesus. And he popularized the, it's the uh, J-H-S, which, is, which in Greek is the first three letters of the, of the, um, the name Jesus. He popularized that, that symbol, and, and it's still popular to this very day, but he would often bless people just with that symbol of the first three words of our Lord. And just a, a reminder that, you know, especially today, so many people take our Lord's name in vain, and also God's name in, in, in vain. So people sometimes, as an expression, they say Jesus, right? And it's wrong to do that because you're just using our Lord's name as an expression. You're not uttering his name reverently. And traditionally, people would bow at the name of Jesus and Mary. And I mentioned this before, so sometimes you may notice during Mass I will do that. Sometimes during the Gospel reading, sometimes it's a little bit hard to do or maybe not as noticeable, but that is the tradition. And, and even to this day, priests are actually required to do that, but it's kind of falling out of practice. And it's, it's no longer commonplace. And it just goes to show how we lack reverence for the name of our Lord. And also, you know, with, with men, so if somebody was walking on the, on the street, they would greet each other using um, like a Christian salutation. You know, praise be Jesus Christ forever and ever. And, and at that invocation or that, that greeting, the men would lift their hats and bow their head once again out of reverence for Jesus, but also out of politeness towards the person that they were encountering. And, and even with coming to church, a lot of men forget they're not supposed to wear hats, right? Women can wear hats, they can cover their hair, they can veil them themselves, but men are supposed to uncover their, their heads and it's a sign of reverence and respect to our Lord who is truly present in the church. So just some, some traditions that unfortunately have kind of um, fallen out of practice even though they are still things that we should still be doing today. Now, you know, for the laity to always bow their head at the name of Jesus, it's probably not, not absolutely required. But uh, as priests, we should, during the Mass, bow our heads at the name of our Lord and at the name of Our Lady. So, so just some things for us to consider. Just a brief announcement, a reminder that this evening we have the Pilgrim Statue of Our Lady of the Cape coming to our parish, and we will have an event starting at 6.30. There will be a short talk uh, presentation regarding the Statue of Our Lady of the Cape. At 7 p.m. we will have the rosary here in the church, and at 7.30 p.m. we will have our regularly scheduled Mass. Please note that this evening we will not have uh, exposition or adoration of our Eucharistic Lord due to this event. And the pilgrim statue will be here at St. Aidan's only until Saturday morning until after the 9 a.m. Mass, and then it moves on to its next location. And also just a reminder that tomorrow, uh, or Saturday evening rather, at 7 p.m. we will have our next segment of our movie night. We are watching the life of St. Teresa of Avila. It's in Spanish with English subtitles. We usually have very good discussions afterwards. So please join us for that. That's an online event. And the link for that will be on our parish website that you can easily access when it's time for the movie.